significant signing for the Buffalo Sabres as they name their new general manager. And we're pleased to uh, join Darren Millard here with Gord Stellick and uh, Jeff Merrick. Uh, bring in Cal's son, Jennifer's brother. Uh, here's uh, here's Jason Botterill. You, you ready to shed the uh, the, the shadow of, uh, of your dad and your sister? No, uh, I think I'm ready to shed the shadow of my father. No way I'm ever going to sh- uh, shed the shadow of my sister, for sure. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, coming up through Manitoba, I interviewed your dad a lot. Uh, and uh, and now it's uh, the, 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 the trifecta now with you. And congratulations on this. I know you paid your dues with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Why is now the right time? Uh, I think it's a situation like like so many players. You always feel like you're ready, and you're probably ready for the National Hockey League uh, as a player even when you need a, maybe a little more season in the American Hockey League. Uh, you know, I felt the last few years that uh, I have been ready to, to accept a, a role as a general manager, and, and that's mainly based off of the mentorship that I got in Pittsburgh under Ray Shiro and Chuck Fletcher in, my, in the start of my uh, career there, and then the last three years under Jim Rutherford. But, uh, you know, I think you just get more confidence going through the interview process. Um, as much as I uh, am very proud of the successes that we had in Pittsburgh in 09 and last year. I think also going through some of the difficult times with the coaching change, GM change, and uh, not meeting expectations at times, uh, the failures that we had in Pittsburgh, uh, will, it just allowed me to be a, a better general manager and more prepared for this job in Buffalo here now from a standpoint of uh, being able to handle any situation moving forward. So, uh, you know, I just felt that it was the right time. Uh, extremely excited uh, to be back in Western New York and in my career here, uh, playing for Rochester and a little bit in Buffalo here. And uh, my family now is excited about helping this organization sort of take the next step. Uh, my meetings uh, with the Pagulas uh, went extremely well and uh, uh, excited about some of the pieces here. And uh, uh, now hopefully can surround them a little bit better and take that next step as an organization. Now, Jason, did I hear correctly you said that actually you don't really care, but the name is Bottrell, that there is no ER? It is Bottrell, but it doesn't really matter if it's Bottrell or Bottrell. In my standpoint, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's fine. Okay, Either well, way. as long as the GM in front of it, that's kind of cool. So that, that's a nice <laughs> way. Uh, you mentioned coaching, and obviously you won a Stanley Cup before with uh, uh, Dan, Dan Bosma as the coach. Yep. Then this time, a coaching change in Pittsburgh is a big reason winning it last year. So in, in looking at the coach, you're not an expansion team like Vegas. Uh, I would think you have some guys in mind, but like what is the kind of guy that's going to be your most important first hire for the Buffalo Sabres? Well, it's a situation where we certainly have a list and we'll continue to, to uh, talk to people here starting uh, in the near future. We have amateur and pro meetings next week and uh, we certainly want to get a coach in place uh, in time for the draft. Uh, but we, yes, we understand the importance of this hire and uh, of getting it right. And uh, um, you know, I've been very, very proud of, of our, our group in Pittsburgh hiring Mike Sullivan as our American Hockey League coach and then having him come up to Pittsburgh. And I think he demonstrates a lot of the traits that are, are key in a National Hockey League coach here right now. It's that presence in the locker room, making sure that uh, people know that he is the main authority figure. Um, but it's also about co- it's also about communication, and especially in, in Buffalo here with so many young players, there has to be an emphasis on development. I think so often in our sport, we talk so much about development, whether our, our junior players, or college players, or in the American Hockey League, and it's an element that is kind of forgotten at the NHL level. And I know it's very difficult with so many games and uh, finding uh, practice time, of, uh, but whether it's on ice from a skills development standpoint or focusing more on a video, uh, development is going to be a key uh, attribute for the, the coach here in, in, in Buffalo moving forward. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Rochester. Uh, you were a former American, uh, now GM of the Buffalo Sabres, Jason. I'm curious, because you, you look at Wilkes-Barre and you look at the Pittsburgh Penguins, correct me if I'm wrong, but those two organizations, Pittsburgh Penguins, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton Penguins, now have the longest streak of consecutive playoff appearances, both in the NHL and American Hockey League, correct? That's correct. So what's the secret? Like, is there, what, what is, like, what allows that to happen? Essentially, what's, uh, what's the secret spice in your chili is essentially what I'm asking here, Jason. Well, I think it's always been a situation where uh, it, it starts at the top. In, in, in Wilkes-Barre, we have uh, an amazing CEO and Jeff Barrett there that oversees everything from the business side and makes sure everything, all the details are taken care of from a hockey ops side. Um, and then it's, uh, you know, the fact that uh, I think our, our management group in Pittsburgh put such an emphasis on Wilkes-Barre. Uh, you know, myself or Tom Fitzgerald, who used to be with the Penguins, Mark Recchi, Bill Guerin, Jason Carmanis, we 
we always tried to get down to Wilkes-Barre and make sure that it was a priority for our organization. And then uh, once we were down there, uh, we always made sure we had strong veteran leadership uh, to go with our young players. Uh, our young players in Wilkes-Barre uh, had to learn. They, they, get, they had opportunity, but they also had to, to fight for their position and uh, compete for jobs and compete for roles uh, on the power play or penalty killing. And uh, I think they, they gained that experience there because when they get to the National Hockey League, they're going to be competing for those, those positions. So uh, the fact that it was such a priority in our organization, uh, I think really – uh, translated to the players and gave them the excitement that, hey, if they did their job or they, they showed a development, there would be an opportunity to move up to Pittsburgh. And that's the same type of philosophy that we want to install here now between Buffalo and Rochester, especially with Rochester just being an hour away, um, a great hockey market. Uh, I think uh, it's something that we really have to strengthen here. On the air with Darren Millard, Gord Stellick, and Jeff Merrick on Hockey Central at noon, Sportsnet 590, the fans, Sportsnet, the NHL Network in the United States, chatting with the general manager of the Buffalo Sabres, Jason Bottrell. In five years' time, how do you think we talk about uh, Jason Bottrell, the general manager, in, uh, in a philosophy standpoint? Well, I, I think hopefully it's just a scenario where I've, I've helped this organization take the next step, where we're, we're, we're a competitive team year in, year out. We're not looking for a, a situation here where um, – you know, we're one and done or have a, a, a one successful playoff run and then and then not competitive the following years. It's, uh, this league is so difficult, and uh, I have so much respect for the league. Uh, and as you've seen in Pittsburgh, yeah, it was great in 2009, great in, in 2016, but uh, we had to be competitive every other year, and you don't always achieve your goal. But it's the fact that you're consistent there year in, year out, trying to be in one of the years you, you eventually break through. So, uh, you know, right now... Uh, we have some work to do, be done here to get to that to that level, uh, but hopefully it's viewed as a standpoint of uh, you know adding some structure to the organization, uh, as we talked about before, you know drawing more of a relationship between Rochester and Buffalo, and just helping a lot of these young players take the next step in their careers. So, what's your biggest challenge out of the gate? Well, obviously, right off the bat here is is working with our amateur staff, making sure we have everything in line uh, for the draft. Uh, you know, figuring out. I think we we are fairly good uh, set up right now from the expansion draft. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm coming late to the party here and talking to other all the other general managers and 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 sort of seeing where other teams are at right now. And so those are the dialogue and the discussions I certainly have to get involved with and to see if there's any way that we can improve our team uh, prior to the expansion draft. And then, as we touched on before, is just you know making the hire from the coach. That's going to be obviously a very important hire uh, for our organization moving forward. And uh, certainly want to get it the right and, uh, person to bring in here to to uh, sort of implement what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, curious, uh, I don't know what you can tell us, but just the Terry Pagula. It's kind of the second wave. First wave came and had money to spend, which was great. Was going to keep teams in Buffalo, which was great. This time, he made a point. Both of the Bills and the Sabers. I wasn't as involved in hindsight in hiring coaches and GMs as before. What was the whole interview process like? Was it him alone? Um, I mean, what kind of things do you think really resonated with him? You've been in a few you know, in interviews, I imagine, before. Yeah, it was a situation where uh, Terry and Kim were certainly involved with the interview process. They were the main people with it throughout the entire process. Russ Brandon was also involved with it, too. Um, and look, I, I can't tell you exactly what happened before in all this type of process uh, uh, with, with the previous searches, but I can tell you that from uh, day one, they talked a lot about communication and instructors to the organization. And, and really, you know, what's gotten me excited about coming to this organization is one, the, the pieces that they have on the ice and surrounding uh, the talent with a little bit more depth. And two, just the resources that we have. Like, I've been blown away uh, just being here for a day or two, uh, what we have on the sports science side, what we have from the analytics side. And I think it's going to be key now moving forward in just bringing all these all this information together to, to make uh, good use of it and, uh, and to make the proper decisions for the organization moving forward. Uh, watching him certainly from afar in your uh, previous capacity with the Pittsburgh Penguins, what did you make and what do you make of uh, of Jack Eichel in some ways we talk about, you know, the big superstars in the game, whether it's Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews, Patrick Line in Winnipeg, been banging the drum all year. Hang on, there's another one here. There's Jack Eichel. Your thoughts on we your, have 20 on your seconds, player. too. Oh, okay, I'm heavy. Uh, no, that, I'm just extremely excited about coming here uh, about that. To me, having in a, in a league that's looking for centermen, to have Eichel and O'Reilly here down the middle is something we're ex very excited about. And you look at Jack's track record of, 
of of winning and success uh, prior to get to the National Hockey League. He's certainly a player that uh, I'm really looking forward to working with uh, over the next few years.